The impact of the scramble for and partition of Africa. The major impacts of the scramble for Africa among European imperial powers were vast. Among them was the disintegration of the pre-existing strong and consolidated African states like the Asante and Dahomey in West Africa and Buganda in East Africa. The scramble for and partition of Africa among European powers also gave room to the establishment of colonial rule in Africa. The establishment of colonial rule moved together with the introduction of Western culture through languages, education and religious activities. Africans who acquired Western culture were brainwashed to the extent that they looked down on African culture and appreciated the Western culture. The partition of Africa among European powers exposed Africa to an exploitative economy, where Africa produced goods that she could not consume and consumed what she could not produce. That way, the Africans exported the raw materials while in turn the Europeans brought back industrial manufactured goods. The traditional African subsistence economy was destroyed because Africans were forced to produce cash crops that had no value to them. Others worked in the mines for the benefit of the European powers. For instance, the people of southern Tanganyika were forced by the German colonial government to grow cotton instead of food crops between 1902 and 1907. This led to hunger and starvation. Hand in hand with the introduction of colonial rule, the Europeans introduced the introduction of colonial culture, including Christianity, Western education and European languages in Africa. Consequently, this undermined the African culture. The major reason that they claimed to have motivated them to introduce their culture into Africa was to civilize the Africans whom they thought to be barbaric and primitive. While in the actual fact they were destroying the African culture and to some extent made Africans lose their identity and sovereignty that could not be found elsewhere in the world. After the partition of Africa, new boundaries were established in the continent the European colonial powers. These boundaries have divided some African communities into different states and they have contributed to interboundary conflicts on the continent. The partition of the African continent led to the establishment of roads and railways by colonial governments. This in turn facilitated the exploitation of African economies and administration of the colonies Africa led. The scramble and partition of resistance among African communities against colonial domination. Consequently, many Africans died during the wars of resistance. For example, Samori Touré led the Mandinka against the French in West Africa, while the Zulu in South Africa and the Nandi in Kenya resisted the British and the He in Tanganyika resisted the Germans. The partition of Africa and subsequent colonization influenced the post-independent state formation in the continent. New states were established in the continent. New states were established in Africa based on geographical boundaries that were established after the partition. Even after independence, African states have maintained close relations with their former colonial masters. In many instances, this has fostered neocolonialism and contributed to further exploitation of the African continent. The Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. This was a conference convened by the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck in Berlin, Germany, from November 1884 to February 1885. The major aim of the conference was to resolve the conflicts that arose among the European powers, who were claiming different regions in Africa. For instance, the Congo River region was being contested for by the British, the Portuguese, the French and the Germans. Egypt was under stiff competition between Britain and France while East Africa due to its fertile soil was contested between Germany and British Angola and Nigeria were scrambled for by Britain, Germany and France due to their mineral potentialities. Due to this competition, there was a great danger that war could break out among European powers. One of the incidents which created great tension between the British and the French was the British occupation of Egypt in 1882 as a result of which the French threatened to occupy Sudan in retaliation for what they considered betrayal. It was against this background that Chancellor Bismarck convened the Berlin Conference to prevent an imminent confrontation between different European powers. The Berlin Conference was attended by all European powers that had spheres of influence in Africa. These were Germany, Britain, France, Italy, Portugal, Belgium and Spain. The United States of America was also invited to attend the events leading to the Berlin Conference. The imperialist activities in Africa brought about a need for peaceful division of the continent. The activities of the British and the French in Egypt resulted into misunderstanding which led to a war, particularly when the French expanded eastwards from West Africa with the intention of retaliating against the British. 
the two met at Fashoda where the military generals of both sides adopted a diplomatic approach. In South Africa the situation was tense as the British and the Boers were in a continuous state of enmity. The Germans took advantage of this to intensify the scramble in South Africa. In other parts of the continent, particularly those which experienced intensive for example, in the Niger River W scramble, the situation was the same the British occupied the lower area of the region, the French occupied the U region of it and the trading companies of the two were in a continuous state of upper unfriendly competition. In the Congo Basin, many imperialism were interested there, the Portuguese, French, Germans and Belgians all demonstrated their interest in the region. The conference had to be convened to avoid the imperialist rivalry in Africa. The Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 introduced principles for effective occupation of colonies and partitioned the African continent among European powers peaceful hence paving the way to the colonization of the African continent. The objectives of the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 The following were some of the objectives of the Berlin Conference. 1. To discuss and settle territorial boundaries among Europeans over the African continent due to various conflicts among themselves. 2. To redefine the spheres of influence, so that other European nations should not claim them again. 3. To discuss the issue of slave trading activities and suggest the means of abolishing it for the purpose of effective utilization of labor power in the African market. The resolution of the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. The following were some of the main resolutions of the Berlin Conference that was chaired by Chancellor Otto von Bismarck from November 1884 to February 1885 in Berlin, Germany. Uh. The Free State of Congo was confirmed as the private property of the Congo society. Thus, the territory of today's Democratic Republic of Congo was made essentially the property of Leopold II. It would finally become a Belgian colony. B. The 14 signatory European powers would have free trade throughout the Congo Basin as well as Lake Nyasa. C. The Niger and Congo rivers were made free for ship traffic. D. An international prohibition of the slave trade was signed. European powers were required to abolish slave trade in their acquired spheres of influence in Africa and protect missionaries and other European agents from African attack. Slave trade was declared as illegal trade. E. The principle was set down that European powers could only own colonies if they actually possessed them. The treaties signed with African chiefs were to be considered valid titles to sovereignty. O. Any new act of taking possession of any portion of the African coast would have to be notified by the European power taking possession, or assuming a protectorate, to the other signatory powers. G. The colonial powers agreed that the agents of colonialism such as missionaries, traders and explorers should also be agents of civilization through education and religious activities and these should be protected from any African attacks and rivalries. Evaluations of the resolutions of the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 Some of the evaluations of the resolutions of the Berlin Conference were uh, The Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 managed to divide some parts of the African continent among imperialist powers peacefully. For example, Congo Free State was declared a personal colony of King Leopold II of Belgium, Togo, Cameroon. Tanganyika and Southwest Africa, Namibia, were given to Germany while Niger was declared as a British colony. B. The European powers managed to establish their authority in their areas of influence. C. The colonial powers committed themselves to fight against any illegal business in the continent. D. It legitimized the occupation and authority of different European powers in different parts of the continent. Although colonialists managed to divide the African continent peacefully among themselves, there were still some conflicts between capitalist nations. For example, in East Africa there was a conflict between Germany and Britain on the issue of Uganda. In order to solve such conflicts, more treaties were signed. For instance in East Africa there was the Anglo-German Agreement of 1886 and that of 1890. Significance of Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 The major aim of the Berlin Conference was to divide the African continent among European powers peacefully, but still it had other significant impacts on Africa and Europe too. To Africans, the Berlin Conference expanded and improved external trade contacts with foreigners, as the African continent was more open to trade contacts with the European nations.
The present political boundaries of Africa are a result of the Berlin Conference which demarcated the boundaries of this continent. Africans learned various languages from the colonizers, for example English, French and German languages. These languages are still used by Africans to date. The spread of Western civilization was vivid since the colonization of the African continent, immediately after the Berlin Conference. Lastly was the spread of colonial administrative systems in the colonies. These were such as indirect and direct systems as well as assimilation and association policies. However, the Berlin Conference is one of the sources of African underdevelopment. Impacts of the Berlin Conference The Berlin Conference had the following impacts on Europeans. A. Uh, economic growth The Berlin Conference led to economic growth for most European nations since they were assured supply of raw materials, cheap labor, and markets for their industrial manufactured goods thus stimulating industrial growth. For instance, King Leopold II gained monopoly of the Congo trade which favored the Belgian economy, while Africans suffered as their traditional economies were destroyed. b. Fame and prestige. Acquisition of colonies in Africa enabled European powers to gain recognition and prestige. c. Boundaries. European powers created boundaries in their spheres of influence, and ignored the traditional African boundaries. They divided some ethnic groups between different states. For instance, the Masai of East Africa were split into two as the colonial boundaries placed some of their kin in northern Tanzania while others were left in southern Kenya. The same case for the U of West Africa. Some of them were found in Ghana while others were placed in Togo. These colonial boundaries in Africa have contributed to conflicts such as those between Cameroon and Nigeria, as well as between Kenya and Uganda over the Majingo Island, between 2009 and 2010. The boundaries that were set by European powers during the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 are still maintained as the actual political boundaries that divide African countries. However, little changes are being made on boundaries as some new countries emerge. For examples the Southern Sudan and Northern Sudan boundary was not fixed by the Berlin Conference. It was a product of continuous sectarian conflicts which the UN and the AU agreed to put to an end by fixing a new boundary and declaring southern Sudan an independent country in July 2011. d. Introduction of European administrative systems. European powers introduced new systems of administration in Africa. The Germans and the British employed direct and indirect rule respectively in their colonies while the French and the Portuguese used the assimilation and later association policy to administer their African colonies. The Berlin Conference marked the beginning of colonialism. Many European powers took control of various parts of the African continent, forcing the Africans to work for them. Moreover, the African chiefs lost power over their domains. e. Introduction of European Languages Europeans introduced their languages in Africa in order to ease colonial administration in the colonies. The influence of these European languages introduced during the colonial era has managed to split the present-day Africa into Francophone, French-speaking, countries, such as Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast, and Benin. Anglophone, English-speaking, countries, such as Kenya, Zimbabwe, Tanzania and Zambia. Comalusophone, Portuguese-speaking, countries, such as Mozambique, Angola and Guinea-Bissau. 0000000000000. Activity 1.2. Dramatize the Berlin Conference of 1884-85 by highlighting the terms of partition. Of Africa. Topic to debate. The Berlin Conference was inevitable. The process of the partition of East Africa. The process of the partition of East Africa took three stages. The first stage involved signing treaties between African rulers and the European powers' representatives, whereby most of the African rulers were ignorant of what they were signing. The second stage was the conclusion of the treaty among the imperial powers defining their spheres of interest and demarcation of the boundaries. Lastly, the European administrators came and occupied their areas of interest. Example of the treaties signed in East Africa were those of Karl Peters who managed to sign various treaties with East African chiefs. Karl Peters managed to sign treaties in Uganda, Tanganyika and Eastern Congo on behalf of Germany. On the other hand, the British were also advancing to Uganda from Egypt in order to safeguard the source of River Nile, which meant life to the Egyptians, and their other interests in Egypt. Therefore, the British wanted to prevent other European powers from controlling Uganda, to avoid the scramble of the two powers over Uganda. 
Another agreement had to be signed by both the British and the Germans. The process of the partition of East Africa involved several treaties. However, the major ones were the Anglo-German Agreement of 1886 and that of 1890. These two agreements involved the British, the Germans and the Sultan of Zanzibar on the other hand. The Anglo-German Agreement of 1886. In mid-October 1886, Dr. Frederick Kral, the official in charge of colonial affairs in the German Foreign Ministry, arrived in London to begin negotiations with his British counterpart, Sir Percy Anderson. Their negotiations were over several issues which stemmed from the establishment of a German protectorate in East Africa. Foremost among these was the question of how much territory on the East African mainland could be recognized by their respective countries as belonging to the Sultan of Zanzibar, a ruler who for many years had found wise and expedient to follow British guidance in his conduct of affairs. However, his claims to sovereign rights beyond the near horizons of his island capital were now disputed by the Germans. Anderson and Kral wound up their talks on October 23, 1886 and by November 1, 1886 identical notes had been exchanged by their respective governments. This agreement involved the British, Germany and the Sultan of Zanzibar. The results of the 1886 Anglo-German Agreement. The Sultan of Zanzibar was given Zanzibar, Pemba, Lamu, Kismayu, Brava, Merka, Magadishu and the 10-mile, 16 kilometers coastal strip on the Tanganyika mainland as his area of influence. Britain was given Kenya as her area of influence, while Tanganyika became a German sphere of influence. Germany also acquired the enclaves of Witu. However, the Anglo-German agreement of 1886 was not very successful due to various reasons. Among them was failure to fix a clear boundary of Tanganyika and the British protectorate of Uganda. The country of Uganda was neither assigned to Germany nor to the British. So, there was a need to sign another agreement so as to avoid another conflict. The Anglo-German Agreement of 1890. This treaty was also known as the Heligoland Treaty of 1890. The treaty involved two powerful parties, the British and the Germans. The Zanzibar Sultan was not involved in this treaty because he proved to be powerless to both the Germans and the British. The major reasons that led to the 1890 Anglo-German Agreement The calling of this agreement was due to many reasons. Some of those were to rectify the failure of the Anglo-German Agreement of 1886. Uganda was not involved in the Anglo-German Treaty of 1886. The British wished to control Uganda in order to safeguard their interests in Egypt while Germany through Karl Peters wanted to extend their colonies in Uganda. By 1890, there were religious conflicts in Uganda which involved Christians, Muslims and traditionalists under Kabakamwanga. These religious conflicts made the missionaries in Uganda to motivate the colonization of Uganda so as to create a Christian state. The White Fathers missionaries appealed to the German government while the Anglican missionaries requested the British government to fulfill the same role. The terms of the Anglo-German Agreement of 1890 the following were the terms of agreement of the Heligoland Treaty between the British and the Germans. The British were given control of Zanzibar, Pemba, Kenya and Uganda as her areas of influence, while the Germans would control Tanganyika and an island called Heligoland located in the North Sea in exchange for Witu enclaves in Kenya. The Clissets of the Partition of East Africa The partition of East Africa had several effects on Africans, the Sultan of Zanzibar, and the Europeans. Some of those effects were the British took control of Zanzibar with effect from 1890 and ruled it, while Uganda was under the British from 1894 together with Kenya, by then they were known as British East Africa. The Germans ruled Tanganyika, Tanzania mainland, and bought the 10-mile coastal strip from the Sultan of Zanzibar. Other colonies included the present Rwanda and Burundi. All these colonies were known as German East Africa. The partition of East Africa between the Germans and the British marked the end of the importance of Zanzibar both commercially and politically under the Sultanate rule since its fame and importance were overtaken by Mombasa and Dar es Salaam which were made the main ports in East Africa. These two ports were linked to the interior with railway lines, used by the colonizers as their means of transport and to collect raw materials from the interior of East Africa to the coast for shipment abroad. Effects of Scramble for and Partition of Africa the partition of the African continent followed by the effective occupation and colonization of Africans. The African continent became under full control of colonial powers as a result of the principle of effective control of the Berlin Conference. 
African rulers' chiefs lost legitimacy in their areas as a result of colonization. The scramble for and partition of Africa brought hardships to Africans by intensive exploitation through forced labor, forced tax, forced cultivation of cash crops and harsh treatment by the Europeans or colonialists. Furthermore, the scramble for and partition of Africa led to the creation of boundaries which were drawn by the Europeans. Colonialists also brought Western culture which was based on education, language and administrative styles. Revision Exercise 1.2 Section A. 1. Choose the correct answer from the given options. I. The Berlin Conference was convened by A. Uh, Sir Frederick J. Lugard C. Emil von Zelewski B. Chancellor Otto von Bismarck William McKinnon 2. The Berlin Conference was initially concerned with the partition of the continent A. Uh, European C. African B. Asian D. American